Good morning, friends. Today I want to share with you a little rant about why there seems to be a link between testosterone and prostate cancer. We had an engaging discussion with a urologist and after explaining everything to him and showing him the results of scientific research, he gave us his opinion. It's truly astounding, isn't it? Are you aware of that? I persist in promoting these ideas. Which precisely transition into what I experienced previously, specifically ablation or consequently chemical castration. What about friends? I'll make an attempt to explain in detail. Today I'm making an effort to remain calm because of various reasons. I've been talking about this for seven years. Thank you friends for everything. Off. Sweet. What about perplexity? Here is a list of recent scientific publications over 10 years indexed on PubMed, which address the link between testosterone and prostate cancer. There is no solid evidence that testosterone is responsible for the onset or progression of prostate cancer. You go to my site X, which I put the link below, and you will see all these studies. What about 2345-67? For more than 10 years, the scientific literature no longer publishes robust data making testosterone responsible for prostate cancer or its progression. Recent studies, including randomized trials and meta-analyses, converge towards the absence of a demonstrated causal link between testosterone, endogenous or exogenous testosterone risk for prostate cancer or its recurrence. Click the links. Perpetuity AI suggested this, but I question it. I asked the question to Grog, which is Twitter. I gave him this information and I told him, what do you think? The answer, summary and list of scientific publications you provided are consistent and well documented. These recent studies indexed on PubMed and dating from the last 10 years. Indeed, there is no strong evidence establishing a causal link between endogenous or exogenous testosterone and the onset or progression of prostate cancer. Here is a concise summary based on the information provided, respecting your implicit request to confirm. Or comment on this data then. Review the evidence, specific data, the limits. So, there you go. Conclusion, recent literature, 2014 to 2025, invalidates the historical assumption that forgiveness, testosterosis, soren la. Let's start with the recent literature again, that the historical hypothesis that testosterone is a determinant factor in the oncogenesis or progression of prostate cancer be rebutted. These results challenge old concerns and support a re-evaluation of clinical recommendations. Concerning the TRT, while calling for continued monitoring, here are my friends. Well, I'm not going to continue. I'm going to continue showing you a video of a famous professor, Professor Solman who is a Belgian professor. And I'm going to give you this video, I think. 
dates from 2019. Oncologists and urologists should know over 10 years of research. Other AIs provide a 15 year date, not just 10 years. So listen carefully to what Professor Schulman said. Look at the publications and you will see that we can question what is done in many American hospitals, hormone therapy for the benefit of other techniques, such as, of course, immunotherapy. Listen. Does high testosterone lead to a higher risk of prostate cancer? So, first question, let's first look at something for which you don't have to be a Nobel Prize winner. A simple logic in general that is simple and logical and often true is that the incidence of prostate cancer that you see on the blue line, as is known, increases with age from 50 to 60 years. However, testosterone decreases by 1 to 2 percent from the age of 35 to 40 years. So there is a precisely quite inverse relationship between the frequency of cancer that increases when testosterone decreases. So when testosterone is low, you get more cancer when you're 70 or 80 than when you're 20 or 30 when testosterone is high. This is a simple, logical argument, and one that is obviously documented by, I would say, more detailed studies. Hello, friends. Then you absolutely must see this video of Professor Claude Schulman. Based on crucial scientific publications of the past 15 years, testosterone, myth, or reality. As he points out, all dying of prostate cancer have zero testosterone. Why? What is the relationship between testosterone levels and the development of prostate cancer? Can high testosterone levels promote this cancer? Well, Several studies, I'll summarize one or two, have shown that you have a higher risk of developing prostate cancer, and especially aggressive prostate cancer, when you have low testosterone. A large study that brought together 18 very large studies, as you see on this graph, indeed shows that on the one hand, there is no influence when testosterone is high, but on the contrary, when testosterone is low, we highlight more prostate cancer. So it's just about just the opposite of the preconceived idea that we had. We go further. What is the possible relationship between high or low testosterone and the aggressiveness of prostate cancer? which is defined by the so-called glycone stage. Well, as you can see in the diagram of this study, when testosterone is low, we have many more aggressive cancers, that is to say, glycone eight cancers or more. Whereas when it is normal or normally high, well, cancers are much more rarer, regardless of age. And here are other studies that I summarize here where we see low testosterone and more commonly associated with prostate cancer. Aggressive and bad predictions. A very large study called the Hypogonadism Registry clearly showed that testosterone treatment did not promote prostate disease, therefore. To answer your question, does high testosterone lead to a greater risk of prostate cancer? No. On the contrary, a low testosterone level is more potentially dangerous to promote aggressive prostate cancer. So, Professor Schulman, does the administration of testosterone cause a risk of prostate cancer? Well, that's obviously the most important question. 
Since this is the question that we ask ourselves by saying, hey, is taking testosterone risky? Then several studies in journals of very high scientific level, like the New England, you already see here an accumulation of several studies have highlighted no risk in patients who receive testosterone. And none developed prostate cancer more than in a control population that did not receive testosterone. The most important study published a little over 10 years ago in JAMA, everyone knows, JAMA has actually studied on tissues, the influence of testosterone on prostate biopsies, on hydrogen markers, and on PSA, and showed that there was no incidence of giving testosterone at the level of altering histology structure or inducing prostate cancer. Thus, to summarize, the administration of testosterone does not entail a risk at the level of inducing or promoting or worsening prostate cancer. So, Professor Schumann, in a patient who has had prostate cancer, yet there a risk to the administration of testosterone? So, this is the last important point, of course. Many patients who were considered cured of their prostate cancer, treated by surgery, radiation therapy or otherwise, it is first quite prudent to wait at least one year to make sure that the PSA is at zero, that the balance sheet does not show any recurrence one year, can be even longer for some two years. And in these patients who, of course, must be symptomatic, have complaints related to the lack of testosterone. Several studies, you see a first summarized there in a review that we did, showed no impact in patients who had been treated curatively, therefore who no longer had prostate cancer in any. It didn't induce a recidivism. We have also reviewed this topic even more recently in a journal, in an international journal, and by reviewing all the literature. And here too, I summarize, Patients who have been treated by surgery, by brachotherapy, by external radiation therapy, or who were even under active surveillance, as they say, they, they have a lesion, but it is not treated. Well, in none of the cases, induction, the risk of recurrence of prostate cancer, has been demonstrated. It didn't even involve it. I'm not going to summarize this whole slide, but what it sort of sums it up is that we didn't induce recurrence of prostate cancer. So to answer this third question, after an observation period of one or two years where we make sure that the patient does not have a recurrence of his prostate cancer, this is obviously indispensable. His PSA is at zero, his balance sheet must be completely negative, and if he has multiple complaints of lack of testosterone, etc., dynamism, and, 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 and other favorable factors, it is not against indicated to consider giving him testosterone, but then still to follow him. Very careful and very tight way, especially in the first year by doing a PSA assessment and so on every three months, and follow him carefully. But in summary, there was no evidence that it was dangerous in well-selected cases. But here too, large studies are needed to see in a much longer follow-up of several years whether the influence remains negative. Therefore, I think we can conclude somehow to say that testosterone and prostate cancer is based on ancient myths that the concept currently is the model of saturation. In fact, the prostate can be compared to a plant. It has very little. The patient has very little testosterone. He is thirsty of testosterone. His prostate is in quotes, whatever it is desiccated. We give him testosterone. We water it very quickly we get to a threshold where we're going to saturate the receptors in the prostate. And then afterwards, if we keep giving water to this plant or his prostate, same thing, well, it won't change anything. So this is the theory, if you will, of the saturation model 
that Morienta then developed and which shows that once you get to testosterone saturation, the prostate is no longer influenced at all. You can continue to give. So to go a little further, we have also shown that when patients have prostate cancer and we operate on them, we remove their prostates. Well, we have a certain effect on testosterone when they have aggressive cancer. That is to say, when they have a glycine that is not very high, people that we no longer operate on currently. Initially, they had testosterone that is within the norm, and one year later, this testosterone was not moving either down or up. But on the other hand, and this is interesting, and this, uh, there is a small correlation with what was said before when patients have aggressive cancer, that is to say, a glycine 7, 8. 9 or even 10. Initially, it overlaps with that. They tended to have low testosterone and aggressive cancer. We remove their prostate and do nothing more. Well, one year later, there is a more than 100% increase in their testosterone levels. That is, the prostate no longer consumes this testosterone and the testosterone level restabilizes spontaneously. Hence, obviously, an additional element to show that testosterone certainly does not have a negative effect on the prostate, but that having very low testosterone is an unfavorable element when one is or has prostate cancer. So to sum up this last question, not in at-risk patients who have had prostate cancer. The administration of testosterone is not dangerous, but should be done with caution and very serious monitoring. Therefore, I think we can conclude that by saying that after more than 60 years, it's time to look at this myth between testosterone and prostate cancer differently, saying that it can promote it, induce it, or aggravate it. It's an old notion. Old notion indeed completely outdated. So, to prove as usual what I'm telling you and what this Professor Showman is telling you, I'm going to go to PubMed NIH, official website of the US government, to put you many studies on the subject that prove that testosterone is not responsible once again. Prostate cancer, otherwise all people who are deprived of testosterone would remain alive, and yet they die anyway. Thank you, friends.